Welcome, fellow UFC bidders. This is uh, JD from Best MMA Picks. Uh, coming at you live with another broadcast just before our fight card, UFC 191. Uh, Johnson, Demetrius Johnson versus John Dotson 2. Uh, we've got a lot. Um, sorry, trying to keep it a little low on the volume here. I'm actually on the road traveling for, for work. Um, so we're going to have to keep this quick today. Um, I won't be able to give my full uh, analysis and breakdown like I normally would. Um, I'll try to give a brief synopsis. Um, if you haven't already done so, please add us to Twitter, uh, twitter.com forward slash best MMA picks. Um, we post all of our live uh, bets there, and we also post all of our uh, updates because some of our liens will change between now and fight time, pending news um, that we that we see. So. Make sure that you add us. Also, please add our channel. We have a YouTube channel, Best MMA Picks. Be sure to add us there as well. Um, we do occasionally post interviews. Um, we also post uh, other fight cards as well. Um, so um, keep on up and up there. Uh, add us on both of those. Please, um, we, we do appreciate we retweets on Twitter. Um, it helps get our exposure out there, um, and we, we really appreciate um, you guys helping out with that. Um, with And everything here is free. Um, we're, we're just trying to get our name out there and promote um, our picks. So uh, with that being said, let's just go ahead and get started right off the bat. A um, couple changes to this card. I'm not sure on the status of some of these fights, if they've been scrapped or what. But first fight that we have on the card here is Nazareno Malagri and... Uh, Joaquin Silva. Um, I, I looked at a little bit of footage on these guys. Uh, it's hard for me to really take a side on on them, not knowing a whole lot about the fighters. Um, I do know that uh, there is an experience advantage um, that goes to, uh, I believe it's uh, Silva, if I remember correctly. Let's see here. No, it, it was... Uh, Nazareño El Tigre. Uh, he's an Argentinian fighter and he's lost three times. He's got a record of 27 and three. Um, most of his wins by sub. So he has kind of an experience advantage over Neto BJJ. Um, I was very impressed with uh, Neto and his uh, footage that I did view on YouTube. Um, I think that he got some pretty slick and quick finishes uh, with his BJJ. And he also sports some really, I mean, he says his name, you know, Neto BJJ as a, as a nickname, um, but this guy is a good striker. Um, didn't get to whole, watch a whole lot of footage on um, his opponent, but uh, my, my lean's to go with the Brazilian here. I think he's going to get it done. I feel like he's probably the superior striker out of the These guys. I think we'll go with Joaquin Silva um, to win by TKO, uh, probably second round. Um, the odds on this fight, um, you've got Silva as the underdog, positive 120, and uh, Nazareno Malagre at negative uh, 134. So I'm going with the dog here. I think he's going to get it done. Um, you know, he doesn't have quite the experience advantage of his opponent, but I do feel like this guy has some really underrated striking. Um, and I would not even be surprised to see it not go past the first round here, being that it's a UFC debut fight. I can see a quick finish here. The, the under looks really tempting at positive 160, but if I were to lean, it would be to the over at 1.5. I think these guys, the experience advantage of um, Allegre, uh, he, it's going to carry him through the first round at least. Um, probably more than likely go to a decision or a late finish stoppage. So um, those are my leans for that fight. Moving on to the next fight, we have Tiago Trator and Clay Collard. Um, Clay Collard being a wild striker. He's coming in at negative uh, 127. Tiago Trator, the Brazilian BJJ practitioner and uh, well-versed striker at positive 115. Over-under is at 2.5 rounds over being favored at negative 153, under at positive 130. Um, I like uh, I like Trator in this fight. I mean, he came off of a loss um, 
it was a finish. He got finished TKO. Um, I don't, I remember his first round or second round, but he's coming off that loss. Uh, he's looked good in all of his other fights. So, um, I'm just not impressed with Collard. I just don't think that Collard has, uh, I just don't think he's a good fighter at all. I don't think he really, you know, he might belong in the UFC, but he's definitely on the lower part of the totem pole there. I think the guy, you know, he, he likes exciting fights, but his, his IQ, his fight IQ is just not, it's not there. It's not the guy leaves himself open to shots and that's going to wear down his chin eventually. Give it a couple of years, this guy's going to be going to sleep and he's going to get cut. Um, I, I, I don't know if he's going to get a lucky punch or not here. I do think he has a puncher's chance in this fight to, to end it. I think the under looks great at uh, positive 130. Um, so I'm going to lean the under 2.5 rounds, positive 130. Um, and I'm going to go with my side on uh, Tiago Trator. I think that's a solid bet as well at 115. Moving on, uh, I've got... We had a fight earlier, Ron Stallings versus uh, Joe Riggs, and I'm still not sure on the uh, status of that fight. It, there were some Twitter updates on Riggs that he was drunk after weigh-ins and he passed out. Um, passed out. So I don't know if they have him on IV fluids or what's going on there. It looks kind of like the fight's going to get scrapped. Um, all the books look like they've taken that one off. I, I, however, I haven't seen anything else as to what's going on with that fight. So um, you might check out the Twitter feeds there. If you can find a book that offers it and they're still going to fight the two of those guys, uh, I recommend taking Stallings, even though he's almost a two-to-one favorite. You could parlay that with something else. I think that you're going to have a solid bet there if, if it does happen. The guy, Riggs, is going to be dehydrated from all that alcohol. You're going to... It's not going to be pretty. Let's put it that way. I don't know what's going on with the guy. You know, my heart goes out to him and hopefully he's okay. But, you know, that's just not good. The guy shouldn't be in the UFC. He's getting drunk before a fight. So, you know, that's going to be the, the bet there. <laughs> but um, moving on, we've got uh, next on the card, Jessica Andrade versus Raquel Pennington. Jessica Andrade is a two-to-one favorite. Raquel Pennington being a two to one underdog over under set at 2.5 rounds with the over being favorite negative 234 under a positive 195. I thought Pennington looked really good. She got, uh, you know, she Andrade on their last fight when they fought each other, you know, Pennington held her own. I mean, she had some really good Muay Thai clinch strikes. Um, her problem was she got backed up against the cage a lot. Uh, Andrade kind of controlled her on the ground, um, definitely had that heavy top control. Uh, Pennington, uh, she needs to change a few things with her game plan. I really feel like she could win this fight rather easily if, you know, she changed a couple of things. One being using her reach advantage, distance, um, you know, we'll see if she makes the adjustments or not. I wasn't too impressed with her coaches, not giving her very good advice in her corner. Um, they didn't, they could have really pushed her to stay off of the cage and to stay out of the clinch, which she should have been doing. Um, Andrade, he, she brought it, that, that fight, and she deserved the nod. I think that she probably could have won that one by unanimous. Um, I think Pennington this time, hopefully she learns and adjusts a few things. I think she's worth a shot as an underdog here. I really do. I think she's got heavy hands and she's got knockout power out of all the women. Um, under is also very tempting here at 2.5 rounds. I mean, I think one of those will probably hit more than likely. Um, I don't want people to waste their money, but you know, I tend to lean. Uh, I tend to lean on the under here. I think somebody could get finished, um, but um, I think Andrade is going to probably get it, get this one again. Um, this was a tough one for me. I, I like I like taking underdogs, but I don't want people to you know get upset if they lose. But when they do win, it's it's definitely nice when you see the opportunities there. So um, I'm going to lean for Jessica Andrade to get another unanimous decision here. Um, but if Pennington makes those adjustments, she's definitely game in this fight as an underdog. I think she has the better hands. I think, you know, she's she's got the better striking overall. I think Andrade was just more tenacious. She, she was after it more. Um, and she's looked really good in her recent fights, too. So I'm, I'm leaning Jessica Andrade. And uh, the under here, 
for my picks on this fight. Um, she could get a sub. Somebody could get finished here. So, Moving on to the next fight, my favorite fight of this card, which I'm extremely excited about. John Lineker versus Francisco Rivera. Lineker and Rivera both heavy, heavy. They like to throw heavy leather. Uh, both guys have finished a number of people by knockout. John Lineker is on this weird pattern where he uh, goes to decision one fight, knocks out a guy the next fight. Goes to decision one fight, knocks out a guy another fight. Um, and, uh, you know, it's he's on the pattern right now where the last fight he went to a uh, decision with uh, Ian McCall, which was a really good fight. He uh, looked really good in that fight, uh, brought it to McCall, beat the shit out of him. And, you know, it, he just looked really good. Um, I, I was really impressed after watching that footage. Um, Francisco Rivera also has looked really good. I think he's fought some pretty uh, tough opponents overall, losing to some of them, including Uriah Faber. Faber, both these guys have experience. They both have the heavy hands. Somebody's going to sleep here. A um, couple things to take note of. John Lineker, BJJ experience, um, grappling experience. Rivera, is um, he's been subbed before. He got subbed uh, in a corner by Uriah Faber uh, with standing guillotine. Um, the guys, most of his losses have been by sub. He's only been knocked out once. He's got a pretty good chin. Okay, guy likes to bag down on his mouthpiece and throw. Both these guys do. Um, Lineker, he's going to have the advantage on the ground with those subs. Okay, uh, Rivera, probably a little bit of an advantage on the feet. Not much. I think Lineker's right hand to hand with Rivera. The odds makers, I tend to agree with them here. I think that Lineker does have a slight advantage here, but I think it's any man's game. I think somebody's going to get tagged. They're going to get dropped and probably subbed um, or just KO'd altogether. But both these guys have chins. Um, I think Lineker looks a little bit more polished, just barely. Um, I'm going with Lineker here on my lean. I think he's going to get the job done. He looks really good. Um, and he had a really tough weight cut last time, so take note of that. Um, he looked really good still with his cardio. I think he's got a little bit better cardio than Rivera. Rivera can gas at times if he throws too much. Both these guys are going to come out. This could be fight of the night. I'm going with the under, negative 108. It's under 2.5 rounds. Somebody's going to get finished. Um, it could be late, so it could be really close. But I, I do think that that's a solid bet. Um, and I'm going with Lineker at negative 130. Uh, next fight we have Paul Felder and Ross Pearson. Paul Felder is almost a 4-1 to one, uh, favorite, almost 4.5-1. to one. <laughs> Uh, Ross Pearson is a positive 379, over under at 1.5 rounds, over being favored at negative 166, under at positive 140. Paul Felder got knocked out his last fight against Edson Barboza by, I think it was a head kick knockout. It was brutal. Um, Pearson has looked decent in a lot of his fights. He's gotten some uh, polish. I mean, his striking's always been pretty polished. Um, you know, a lot of people kind of... Uh, they, they uh, you know, kind of be pretty critical of uh, Pearson, but he actually fights out of a really good gym, Alliance MMA in San Diego. Um, a lot of those fighters, like uh, uh, super intelligent, high IQ fighters like uh, Dominic Cruz, uh, Phil Davis, uh, a lot of these uh, former champions and champions that fight out of that gym. So this guy has a lot of really good guys that he's working with. Um, and Felder also uh, trains with Donald Cerrone, another really top-ranked fighter right now. Um, so both these guys are kind of uh, – they're, they're up, you know. Pearson's looked better. He's, uh, he, he's definitely improved from what he used to be. People say he's washed up. I, I just tend to disagree there. I think he's got more power in his hands now. Uh, he's, it seems like he's put on a little bit more weight too, which could be to his advantage there. Um, I tend to lean here with Pearson as an underdog. I like him as an underdog against Felder, especially coming off a loss that can really mess with the guy who's gone on, gone undefeated. Um, a lot of people are saying Paul Felder to bounce back. Uh, four to one odds uh, against a very experienced guy like Pearson. I don't like that at all. I think that's an idiot's bet right there um, to take like a newer fighter at four to one. Um, I, I just I can't agree there. I think that it's worth a shot at the underdog here with Ross Pearson. I think it's going to go over, 
We could see an early finish though, but I think it goes over here. I think Pearson's got a good, good gin and Felder's more of a technical striker. He doesn't go for broke. Uh, we could see a knockout or a TKO though, but um, Pearson's probably going to get caught a few times. Um, but you never know. He might actually use some of those feints that he's he's good at, and uh, it's going to be definitely a technical war here. So I think over is the best bet here. Negative 166 on the over 1.5 round. I think that's pretty much a gimme. My last card, I was very disappointed with the, uh, I think everybody, nobody saw it coming with the five rounder that, that we had that upset on with uh, the, the, the uh, main event fight between Holloway and Oliveira. That, that was a huge disappointment. And I'm sorry for people who tailed that. That, that should have been a give me. I mean, that was horrible for USC promotion for that to not go past the first round. It was horrible. Um, very anticlimactic fight. And Dana White, I'm sure, was not happy about it. But it happened sometimes. It was a freak accident. The guy he busted his clavicle or whatever it was, a chromioclavicular. Uh, and so, you know, that just was very unfortunate. We'll bounce back. I'm not... I don't have any doubt about that, but the over here is a really good play. I think negative one, even at negative 166, 1 1.5, I think that's kind of a gimme. Um, so those are my leans. Ross Pearson, small play underdog, over 1.5 rounds. Uh, next fight, we have Paige Van Zandt at, versus Alex Chambers. Um, Van Zandt's just looked completely dominant in all of her fights. Very, very impressive. Um, Alex Chambers, I do not know much about her. Um, to be honest, and I have not even capped this fight. I didn't think it was worth it for me to cap this fight, um, being that Paige Van Zandt has such, such a huge favorite here at negative 116 or negative 1,600. Um, Alex Chambers is a 10 to 1 underdog here. Um, <laughs> I'm almost tempted just to throw a little bit of coin on uh, Chambers just because she's such a huge underdog. And I think uh, the women's fights don't have such a huge disparity between. Uh, fighters like the men's fights do um except with rousey of course um the under could i think the under is probably the play here but i'm uh, probably not going to touch any of these lines under is at a negative 136 over is at 2.5 over 2.5 at positive 116 we've seen a lot of underdogs come through lately uh weird ones too that you wouldn't expect um especially with that uh yeah, it was just a lot of weird stuff's been happening. So keep that in mind. Bet carefully there. I wouldn't touch those lines personally. Um, but those are my leans. Patreon Zant's going to completely dominate her. And we're going to look at probably a finish or stop edge of some kind. Next fight, we've got Jan Blackowitz versus Corey Anderson. Two different fighters here. Blackowitz has to pick his shots, and he likes to go for a nice... KO finish. Anderson is more of a volume striker. He's probably got a little bit of a speed advantage there. These guys are both fighting at light heavyweight. Uh, Blackowitz looked really good um, with his finish of Hilaire Latifi, who is a very, very tough opponent. Very, very, very high de highly decorated wrestler. Um, Swedish wrestling team. Um, he finished him. It was with, with a rib cage kick. And it was just absolutely brutal. Um, I've never seen that guy keel over like that. Um, you could definitely tell he was hurt. And I think Blackowitz, he uh, sensed that blood and went in for the kill and finished him off. Um, he had somewhat of a uh, close fight with Jimmy Manoa, who ultimately got the better of him. Although uh, a lot would argue that that fight was a little bit biased in the judging, I think. Um, I think that he was definitely could have won that fight for sure. Manoa was a very top. He's an elite opponent, especially in the Bama leagues in Britain. Um, Anderson, uh, tough guy, uh, ultimate fighter, uh, volume striker, not so much of a power striker, more of a volume striker, likes to use feints, likes to use that boxing, um, likes to slip in jabs. So two different fighting styles here. Um, Anderson's going to have more of a volume strike advantage here if it goes to the cards. Blackowitz, though, if he ends up hitting this guy, which he may, I think that this guy's going to get finished for sure. Um, 
I think he he got finished in his last fight. Anderson got finished his last fight. Wouldn't be surprised to see him get finished again. I think the guy, you know, he's a young guy, younger fighter. Blackwich has a little bit more experience under his belt here. I think he's going to know what to do. My leans to go with Jan Blackwich over Corey Anderson by TKO. I think that it's going to go under the 2.5 rounds for sure. Positive 140. That looks really juicy to me. Um, so my leans to go with the under here and to go with Blackwich for a finish at negative 131. Next fight, we have Anthony Johnson and Jimmy Manawa. Both really good fighters. Both very talented. Johnson's coming in as a negative 709 favorite here. Don't get me wrong. I was very impressed with Johnson's performances in the past. I think he's a huge, too much of a favorite here. It's really odd to me that he's such a favorite. I could see him at 3-1 to one or maybe 2-1 to one here against Manoa. Manoa is a tough guy. If you look at his footage, he's absolutely decimated most of his opponents. Um, he even put up a really good fight against Alexander Gustafson. I was impressed there, but he ultimately got finished. One of his, I think that was his first finish of him actually ever losing by, you know, a stoppage. Um, over under set at 1.5 rounds. Over is a positive 140. Under is a negative 166. I gotta look. I want to look at the weigh-ins here with these guys. I think that a lot of these, either both of these guys or one of these guys, was on PEDs. I didn't get a chance to look at the weigh-ins, and I'm going to uh, probably adjust my lean or probably change a bet on this one, but I like the positive 499 with Jimmy Manoa here. You know, it's probably not going to win, but there's a good chance that if Johnson was on PE days, you know, he's going to probably have some gassing issues, which looked like he did a little bit against, um, he looked like he had some issues with gassing against uh, Daniel Cormier, and Manoa is one of those grinder guys. His grinding style he likes to get guys up against the cage. He likes to just beat them down with those knees. I think this, this is not a good fight for Anthony Johnson at all. I think this is more of a Manoa type fight. You know, if Manoa can keep him up against the cage, use some dirty boxing, use those knees and that Muay Thai that he's famous for, I think that he could pull off a huge upset here. Um, my leans to go with Manoa here at the 499 on a small bet. And um, I also like the over here as well. Um, over 1.5 rounds at a positive 140. If Johnson wasn't on PEDs and that was just his pure power, you're probably going to see an early finish here. So, you know, my advice would be to look back at the weigh-ins and see what these guys look like. Um, if they, if Johnson looks like he's flabby, you know, like a guy that came off of some testosterone or something after 40 years, uh, you know, I'd probably tend to go with the uh, over here. Um, if, if he still looks as good as he did when he was on the on the rise, I'd probably go with the under. So uh, my lean here is to go with Jimmy Manoa and uh, the over on this. I think one of those two will hit. Um, so, you know, your bet's worth it there on those two. Um, moving on to our main event, we've got Andre Arlovsky and Frank Mir. Um, we're just going to be cutting this real close here. I have to get my work clothes on, but we'll uh, we'll finish this one off. Andre Arlovsky, Frank Mir. Arlovsky's coming in as a negative 151 favorite. Frank Mir, positive 136. The over-under is set at uh, 1.5 rounds. Over is a uh, positive 142. Under is a negative 168. Both these guys are pretty tough guys. Um, Arlovsky's got a little bit of speed advantage over Amir. Amir has greatly improved his boxing. Both these guys have improved leaps and, leaps and bounds. It kind of came out of nowhere, kind of uh, were washed up, and now all of a sudden they're back in the limelight. It's kind of weird, uh, but it's kind of cool at the same time. I think that's part of the UFC strategy with their promotions. They like underdogs to, you know, people can relate to the underdog story, and this is kind of one of those examples there. Um, I like Arlovsky here. Um, I think he's faster than Mir, although Mir, is def his boxing is just something else now, which kind of scares me a little bit. Um, I feel like Arlovsky is really good with his timing, though. Um, both these guys have really good timing now, it seems like. It's weird. Um, not used to seeing that with both these fighters. Mir can take a shot. I think out of the two of these guys, Mir has a better chin. Um, he's a bigger guy. He's stronger. He's definitely got the ground advantage here, but Arlovsky's also a really good grappler. So 
Um, the striking advantage, in my opinion, is more due to timing and hand speed. That advantage is going to go to Arlovsky for sure. Although Mir is right there with him as far as um, boxing um, timing, probably. But Arlovsky's just faster, in my opinion. He's a little smaller. He, he can definitely faint better. He's got better foot footwork um, than Mir. Uh, but Mir's, you know, like I said, he's improved. If Mir connects with Arlovsky, Arlovsky's going to go to sleep. The thing with Arlovsky is none of these guys that he's fought the last three fights have actually really had a solid connection with him. I think Brown connected with him once and tagged him, and he was lucky that he didn't get dropped because Brown is a huge-ass guy. Um, but I think Arlovsky has that speed and power to get the job done here. I think he's going to get it done. Um, lean with Arlovsky here, even as a heavy favorite. Um, and I'm going to go with, I think that we're going to go over on this one. I don't know why, but I think that it's going to get done probably late second round. Um, it's going to be close, though. But something that close, um, you always go with your positive money there, and that's positive 142. We could see an early finish here. I think both these guys are going to feel each other out because they both have seem to have a lot higher fight, fight IQ, IQ as of late. And they're going to look for that opportunity to finish the other guy, and that's going to probably wear down the clock a little bit. So um, definitely ground advantage goes to Mir here, but I think it's going to stay standing the entire time. I think that the defensive wrestling of Arlovsky is going to keep it on the feet. Um, so yeah, we're going over 1.5 rounds, positive 142, and Arlene is going to go with it, be with Arlovsky here. Um, good luck to everybody. Um, let's not get crazy this car. Let's keep all our bets the same. We're not gonna, yeah, you know, we're not gonna do what we did last card. I was very confident with that bet, and I'm sorry for people who tail. I thought I still will stand by it as being a solid bet, and I think people would agree with me there. It was a weird card. Um, a lot of really, really good handicappers got completely destroyed that card. So, good luck to everybody out there. Let's cash this together. Let's work as a team, and uh, let's bring down those books.